Welcome to Commercial Real Estate Investing. I'm Tim Diesel, and today I'm answering a question. Where are the good deals? You can always go to the website, www.dieselcommercial.com, and I've got articles up there. You can reach out to me if you have any questions, and we'll definitely make sure you're taken care of. So this question I have been getting uh, lately, and a long time actually, and I'm sure some of you are wondering the same thing. Where are the good deals taking place? So I'm going to give you some truth, and you may think it's bad news depending on what you're doing currently, what you're focused on. Also, I have mentioned before that depending on the property class you're after, this can change. So if you're uh, focused on industrial storage, you're going to have a different time uh, than someone who's looking for office buildings, right? It's going to be, it's totally, totally different. So I'm going to generalize it a little bit here. Also, I have mentioned um, pretty much everyone knows I'm an apartment uh, uh, kind of, that's kind of my, my forte, I'm kind of an expert there. That's my main area of focus. But right now is not the best time to buy apartments. And I let clients know that. I'm very upfront with them. If you're selling though, hey, you're at the top, may not be a bad idea, uh, you know, get the very most you possibly can for it. And if you're new, it's probably not very wise to go in there and, and buy your first property if you don't have a proper plan in place or someone on your team that knows uh, a little more th than you do. Um, it's, it's not the rookie uh, field right now. It's not the marketplace for it. Retail properties have the most upside in my opinion, but you have to be careful on how you structure the deal, what tenants are in place, and for how long. Even a triple net deal means nothing if the company that's paying you rent files for bankruptcy. So be very careful uh, of who the tenant is and, and what they are doing. So the truth is there's absolutely zero good deals out there if you're comparing the market now to what it was seven, eight years ago, right? It's not even the same, uh, same playing field. You know, it's almost you're, you're playing in a different uh, game altogether. What you'll find is there are good properties to invest in and you can make money. But the landscape has changed a bit and you're going to have to put a little more legwork than before. And I'll break this down. Interest rates are, interest rates are a big deal. Um, and so are re the retail store closures that we've been seeing happening. And let me drill down into that and break it up a little bit. So I'll cover um, interest rates first. The main reason properties have shot up in value um, are rates. Rates are low, uh, and this is my opinion. Rates are low, and they will continue to drop uh, in the near future until they can't drop any lower. They might even hit zero. I'm not sure. Now, eventually, they will start to increase because they can't contain this forever. Uh, sooner or later, um, you can only suppress something for so long. You can only sweep something under the rug for so long. And that's just, that's just the way it is. This is fairly basic. As rates go up, prices come down. I believe the marketplace could change maybe under a year, maybe six months from now. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, it, it, it could go a handful of different ways. Now, let's talk about store closures and what that's doing. It's not just the empty buildings and the landlords that are having a tough time selling. Um, because if you have been listening to me, we don't pay for pro forma numbers. So um, we only pay for what's actually coming in. Nothing else matters. So these properties that somebody wants two or three million dollars for and they're advertising a seven cap, but in theory, it's actually a five. Well, 
We're not doing that. That just doesn't make sense. A lot of the brokers, they know that, I think, and I don't know, maybe they want the listing. I'm not really sure. Maybe sellers, they don't want to go a certain price. But any way you slice it, you should never pay for pro forma numbers. Uh, I actually don't even think you, sh you should be allowed to put pro forma numbers on your advertising. I, I mean, that's just wrong altogether. So many of these larger properties still have vacancies from fran uh, franchise tenants that used to be there, and they haven't filled them up yet. So uh, a big Staples, a big Sto Toys R Us, uh, uh, you know, uh, like a Walgreens, GNC, something like that. That's not the only issue here. Those workers lost their jobs due to layoffs from store closures. Well, what happens to them? More than likely, they rent an apartment somewhere. Well, this is something I have also covered before. Typically, they're not renting Class A property. It's more like Class C, maybe B. New investors are trained, I should say, because there's a lot of new programs coming out, all these new uh, uh, syndication groups and all these guys you know, selling you their courses. They're trained to buy Class C properties and turn them around. Uh, they've been buying Class C properties like crazy. Well, and I'm not frowning upon them. I say, hey, if there's a way you can make money and do it, hey, that's fantastic. But the truth is these guys made their money, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago. And it, the same strategies may not work the same way for you. Now, what do you do when you get vacancies from these uh, Class C uh, renters, I should say? Well, I don't know. It's a question. If you're the smaller landlord with eight units, you might have a tough time. But if you're the guy who bought 150 plus apartments and you think you're bulletproof, uh, you're going to run into some vacancies too, believe me. Um, if people don't have any money to pay, they don't have any money to pay. There's nothing you can do about it. They're already in. And it's uh, in different parts of the country. There's obviously different rental laws. I don't know what they are everywhere. I know what they are in Florida. I don't know what they are in um, you know, uh, Wyoming or something like that. Texas, who knows? Uh, that's different depending on... Uh, there's a lot of buying going on in Texas. Obviously, Atlanta... I don't know what they are over there. I've never taken too much time to study them. So having said all of that, I believe the good deals right now, from what I'm seeing, are the properties with vacancies. Now, let me break that up a little bit. Because you can typically step in and turn them around. Now, two types of vacancies here. If you're buying apartments with vacancies, there's very, very slim pickings, right? Because if they're vacant, that's because they clean them up and they're trying to rent them. Uh, if you're buying retail with vacancies, those are um, easier to acquire, but they're tough to turn around also. Um, it's very tough to turn around property that's fully occupied, right? The value add opportunities right now are in retail, in my opinion. Multifamily is tough. Industrial doesn't really have many options because it's usually uh, one or two tenants. Unless you're doing um, a storage or uh, an, um, uh, anything like manufacturing, something like that. But even those are tough. And office, you shouldn't even do. I mentioned this in a podcast titled The Toughest Properties to Turn Around. Now, look for vacancies that is where you'll find opportunities. But the issue for the new buyer is you might have a tough time finding a tenant to place uh, in that particular space. So keep your eyes open. There are deals there. You just have to go through a lot and evaluate a lot of them. I hope that was helpful. I'm at Tim J. Diesel. If you feel compelled to reach out to me, ask me any questions, I'd love to help you. You can find me on LinkedIn. That seems to be where I get most of my questions lately. Um, but um, I'm also on uh, Facebook and whatever else uh, you guys are, are on as well. Please check out my YouTube channel and subscribe uh, as well. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your week.